I'm not going to create a histogram without intervals. Um, so, you know, histograms is a bar graph where the bars don't touch because we're dealing with continuous data. So we're going to pretend that this data here in column A is continuous and we need to put that into a histogram. So one thing that you can do if you would like um, is you can sort it. So I'm going to highlight this up here on the right. I'm going to hit the sort and filter and I'm going to sort from smallest to largest. Now, if you have a small data set like I have here, you could actually do your own counting. Um, but I'm going to use the count if feature and show you how that works. So I can see that my numbers are 6, 10, 12, 14, and 15. So I have five distinct numbers in this data set. So if you're thinking about graphing, like this would be my x-axis, this would be my y-axis when I graph this. So I need to figure out how many sixes I have. And I know that you can see there are two, but I want to show you how this works using a formula. So if we go into more functions, statistical, we come down till we see this count if. Now count if, it's, it's actually going to count the numbers for you. So think if you have 2,000 numbers in your data set, you can use the count if feature and it'll calculate everything for you. So the range is simply the spots that you want to be in. So I just want these 15 numbers. And my criteria is that I'm looking for six. And this count if feature also works for words. So if you had colors of cars and you wanted to search for green, you could do that. Just type in green and it will search for you. So I have two sixes. And now that I've used the count if function, I can go up to recently used and there's count if. So again, I can run through this. My criteria is 10. Again, recently used count if function. Here's my range. Now my criteria is 12. So come again, right? We're going to do this just two more times in order to get uh, the frequencies is what we're looking for here. Now, one thing I do recommend after I'm finished, I have 15 numbers and hopefully you know how many numbers in your data set. So I'm going to go over here and auto sum and just say, hey, my, my total is 15. That's what I want. So I just like to double check that. So now that I have um, here my little frequency distribution table, now I can create my graph. So I'm going to go to insert and I want, I'm going to just go to recommended charts and here's a bar graph. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it in. Now we should always have a title. So I'm just going to type in histogram because I mean, it's made up data here, right? Well, in order to make this um, a histogram, we need the bars to touch. So I'm going to double click on the bars to bring up, uh, you see this format on the side, and I'm going to click on these bars. So when I go to the gap width, if I turn the gap all the way to zero, you can see how my bars now touch. Now you might like that. You might think that looks great. I prefer my bars to have um, lines in between them, right? So that they're distinct. So if I click on this paint can and go down to this border, you can see that the border now color is the same blue. So if I change the border color, well, that's the wrong button. Crap. Um, here we go. We should be able to change um, the border color to black. And then, so I just clicked on this down to border and you can change the color. So that's how I got the lines in between. And now you can see the distinctness between the bars. So they touch, which makes it a histogram. Um, and you can do all kinds of different things with all of these different features, you know, reflection, shadows, all kinds of fun stuff. So you can change your graphs as much or as little as you want. Um, but that's kind of uh, the basics of how to create a histogram without intervals. Um, I already have a video on creating histograms with intervals using the bins and such um, if you search my page.